Well, uh, welcome students to my lecture number 49, which I have uh, particularly um, wanted that uh, we should uh, give you some technology which has an advanced level, particularly for harvesting. Now, harvesting of cotton has been the case in this particular lecture. Why? Uh, we wanted that uh, uh, we have so far I have discussed about the different technology used for harvesting of cereal crops, uh, for root crops, fruit crops, all we have discussed and we have also discussed the various equipment which are used, various machines which are used, what are their power sources, what are their capacities and uh, how, what are their special features, uh, what material they are made of and all that. Now, now we would like to, um, I thought the one uh, work which we have developed uh, done at IIT Kharagpur uh, over a period of time. Uh, we wanted to share with you which is an advanced technology used for harvesting of cotton. Uh, particularly you know about uh, this crop you must have heard that uh, harvesting of cotton is a very difficult task and in this respect uh, we wanted to develop a technology which will be drudgery, reducing the drudgery of the people who are involved in this. So, uh, let us let's, uh, discuss in detail about uh, this particular um, uh, approach of uh, cotton harvesting through the slides which I have brought for you. Well, uh, why uh, cotton, why robot in cotton harvesting? Well, uh, this is a question which I have asked, but the question is uh, as I said, we need to know about uh, the details of how the um, present task uh, is done. You can see here the some of the, um, some of the four, uh, figures I have given, the photographs you can see here the photographs which are given here and here and uh, these uh, some of the equipment. Now, what is, what is done in this? The problem in hand picking is first of all it is a drudgery and uh, it is uh, labor intensive, it is very high cost labor, cost of labor is very high. You know that because of the uh, non availability, scarcity of labor as such the cost has increased for every um, uh, crop for that matter and for every operation for that matter. So, and more so particularly because this is a drudgery prone um, crop where when the person goes lot of uh, thorns etcetera are there while uh, it is picked and uh, many a times they got, get hurt in their um, fingers and all that. So, what are the problems related? I have just jotted down for your uh, information is that uh, not, not suitable for every variety at uh, all at once process. Uh, mechanical uh, cotton is stripping. Sometimes um, we can do that ok, use a machine and then strip of everything, uh, but it is not done because we require at different stages not at one time, one go harvesting the way we do for other crops, this is not done for this particular crop. Then uh, capacity is less, some of the machines, some of the attempts which um, people have made are uh, less capacity and uh, still arduous and uh, not very effective. Now, advantages of robot harvesting, what then we thought that instead of uh, human being, let there be a robot which is utilized. You may ask a question as to why you are thinking of robot in this country, no. In fact, we have to think ahead because uh, a time will come when there will be a lot of cotton grown and lot of um, uh, yields to be harvested in time and you will not have people for doing that. In fact, this is the problem here now itself. So, you can imagine what will happen and there, therefore, the research must start, research has already started in several locations, we also wanted to do at IIT Kharagpur and the work which we have done is going to be shared over here. So, now basic harvesting cycle of a robotic arm, now actually what it is, for example, if you have to, if the human being has to go in the harvesting uh, in the crop, what he will do? The, he will go identify the ball, uh, white ball of the cotton and try to pick it up and then store at one location. This is what generally uh, is done. So, uh, the, your machine should also be doing this particular thing because when we, when we say robot is also a uh, machine, human machine you can say. So, uh, now what are the um, aspects? The first uh, point which has to be looked into or the, for the complete cycle. Uh, and cycle time for this operation is the image processing time that you require you have to um, capture the images uh, identification of the cotton balls. You must first identify where it is whether the um, we are identifying the cotton balls or, or something else. So, first we have to identify the cotton balls and for that you have to take the images. So, um, by 
you have to take the images, process the image to identify the actual one. Then vision time, actually this vision time talks of the machine vision, the procedure the rectification of the images because when the images are taken, uh, what is the condition of that, then the, it will be distorted, it may be that the uh, image is not exactly of the uh, crop, it is of um, cotton or of uh, not of cotton, but of something else. So, we need to actually um, identify where they are. And once we know that okay, this is cotton, identify that yes, it is a positive image which is cotton. So, once we know the cotton, then we need to know where it is, from which point, because human being can go to that place and do it, but the machine will not do it. So, machine for the machine, every coordinate has to be identified, every location in the x, y, z plane has to be located and the movements it has to do to actually grip and then uh, pull it off. So, this, this is the one which is done in this aspect. Then inverse kinematics, in fact, uh, what we do is when we try to find out the primary basic location which is which we call the um, forward kinematics and uh, when we want to know about the angles, for example, x, y, z will talk of this. Then the moment we talk of the angles required for corresponding x, y, z uh, planes, or x, y, z axis. axis. So, we, uh, we employ inverse kinematics where we can get the orientation and other angle details, and the limits etcetera. Then the picking time, then once it is known we are in a position to find out the angle etcetera, then we will find out what is the amount of torque required for taking that uh, the ball and removing it from there. So, accordingly uh, there has to be a, uh, equipment, there has to be a system which will try to pull it and then uh, pick the uh, cotton from there. So, the cycle starts from taking the image uh, of the equipment to uh, picking the uh, actual um, cotton ball into the uh, field. This is the complete uh, basic harvest cycle of the autumn robotic arm. We call it robotic arm as such because there will be a arm just like a human being, it will just go there, pick up once it identifies and then take it. So, this is the complete cycle. Now, algorithm used for cotton recognition. Now, what is the algorithm? Uh, well, it is very big algorithm which has been used and uh, in fact, it is the work of uh, one of our uh, research students. So, we may not be in a position to tell you every details of that, but in nutshell we have given you some of these aspects of this algorithm which the person has uh, done it. So, you can uh, we can you can have a look at this actually. So, input Im uh, color image then convert this image uh, into, into double, then you split three color um, components RGB, then uh, pixel um, find out the pixels of that, then you find um, again. Uh, divide into A and B, where A is R equal to G is equal to B is equal to 1 and then R is equal to G is equal to B is equal to 0, where you call whether it is the actual image or not. Then open um, operation and small area removal and then final segmenting of the image. So, this will talk of the um, image process. Now, when we go to the other side, color difference methods uh, uh, algorithm, color different algorithm, where calculate B minus G for each pixel. Similarly, you will calculate B minus G by R, my R by G for each pixel. Now, then the next one is see here uh, various color difference method algorithms have been tried. Now, this is one, this is one here, the other one is here uh, calculate B by G for each pixel here, this is B minus G, this is B by G, here calculate B by B minus G by R minus G, mm, this algorithm then in this what we calculate is uh, over here that is calculate C A which is B minus R by 3 minus B G where G by 3. Now, this, these are the concepts which have been used for identification and the uh, differentiation recognition of that. Now, this is the detail of this until unless you have idea about uh, the uh, particular image processing you may not be in a position to appreciate this, but then as an engineer, uh, you must know what is the technology which is being used for uh, robotics and uh, application of robotics. We may not be in a, in a position to tell you every details of that because as such uh, being an agriculture engineer, we are not equipped with the detailed knowledge of that. We have only picked up the knowledge and try to explain and apply that into um, our application, uh, our picking of that. So, that knowledge we have, so application part 
and if you want to go into more details of that you should always go for the details in the relevant books and you will find them. Well, for how do you segment the mm, cotton? Segmentation using color difference method, the methods which we, I told we have given there. Uh, the methods mm, are uh, see, A is original image, B is after B minus R segmentation, after mm, R minus B segmentation and the other is after B minus G segmentation. Now, mm, why? Because until unless we actually identify the correct image, you will, the mm, job will not be done. So, this part mm, segmentation is very important. Now, segmentation using color difference method, several color difference methods have been employed as I said earlier and those have helped us in, in identifying. You can see here that in A, B, C, D mm, how uh, we are in a position to identify from the A is the original image. So, from the original image to a image which is giving you here D after B minus G segmentation it gives you very clear uh, information about what it is if you if you compare A and D here. Then this is the information which you get from there. Now, this is done by the uh, by the computer and then it is done by the processing system. The comparison between different methods during evening time. Now, you see this uh, this is one aspect which has to be looked into what time of the day the picking is taking in taking place and what will happen uh, with the climate or uh, morning or evening or daytime. So, during evening time a, a comparison has been made between different methods. Now, you can see here the original meth, uh, original um, image which was there A, then the chromatic aberration method B, then the color difference ratio method C, the color difference method D and the band ratio method E. Now, you can you can very easily identify that E and E are very close to exactly what the situation is or if you compare even A and B. Now, out of this one has to choose it will come out of uh, experience and when you have large volume of data then only you can compare that uh, what is the exact uh, matter and where is this actual balls which are there. Well, the par parameters used in performance evolution of proposed algorithms, what are the parameters used? We thought uh, it also to uh, let you know about what they are and how they are done. In fact, uh, these generally until unless you have some idea about the algorithm, you will not be able to follow it. But then uh, as an information which you can if you want, you can go to uh, the books and get uh, more details. For example, I will tell you here the um, uh, hits rate that is correct ones TDC by TDC plus MC where TDC is true detection of the cotton and MC is missing cotton. So, hits rate is dependent on this. The false positive is uh, um, false detected this, this is false positive the, it may be positive, but it is not detecting then one then false negative is MC here then missing cotton, missing cotton divided by the total cotton which is true detection cotton plus missing total. So, you can see that this is the process which have been you algorithm to, to process each image. This is the uh, uh, these are the parameters which have been used to identify this which we have discussed earlier. So, so, what is the what other parameters used in evolution of proposed algorithm then with respect to the number of pixels we talked of the number of pixels uh, number of pixels predicted as background yes it is in the background because you have to identify from this background as many times it is in the it is hidden in the background the bottle cartridges are hidden in the background sometimes. So, how will you take it up? So, what we have is sensitivity then we have specificity and then accuracy. Now, these are the parameters which have been used and uh, how they are used, what are their values, um, what they depend on it is given here that number of pixels predicted as cotton when these pixels are of cotton. Then the TN it talks of number of pixels predicted as background when these pixels are of background. So, um, the, these are some of the important um, parameters which must be looked into when we are thinking of evaluating the proposed algorithm whether the algorithm algorithm is in the right direction or not, whether it will properly identify the balls or not. This is what is important. 
So, we have to have uh, this uh, these parameters taken into consideration when you are evaluating uh, the the uh, the accurate accurate accuracy of where the uh, where the faults are. The performance of cotton segmented algorithms. Now, what is the performance? Well, uh, the values which we have got here, as we discussed in, in the other ones, is that uh, see what are the different methods, what are their um, heads and false positive, false negative. We we have um, seen earlier who, on what basis we got. So, if we take these, let us have a look at these values which are there and this will give you some information how you are in a position or how the researcher has, in a, has developed the algorithm and correctly predicted the location of the, uh, of the uh, balls and the cotton balls. See the color difference method hits uh, 93.3 percent the false method uh, false positive 21.33 and then false negative is this. So, you can see that color difference method uh, with a, in a um, light uh, noon time which is about uh, the 50 um, kilo lux of uh, the um, illumination level. Now, if evening time uh, the illumination level is 2300 lux. So, um, depending upon this um, what is the uh, behavior, what is the performance of this? See, you can see uh, color difference uh, hits are 88.62, then false are uh, minimum, uh, false negatives are also less. Similarly, for band ratio, we find here that the chromatic aberration is giving 94.3, and these two are also very less. Now, you can see this chromatic aberration in this case also is 96, and uh, the false negatives are less. Okay. So, if you compare that in noon time, and in evening time, the cotton segmentation um, algorithms, we find that chromatic aberration gives a better performance as compared to others. Now, um, it is a question of uh, argument. You can say that how do you say that these values are to really uh, 94, 91 and then 2 and 2 and this is 8 and 5, how statistically different. Uh, well, here I would say that the argument is that uh, you need to take large volume of data, then only you can uh, question this. It is just an attempt made and uh, it is giving us the results. So, we will say that uh, definitely this has uh, given us the actual the actuals what we are comparing and how we are in a position to identify the, the um, cotton balls. Well, uh, the same thing which we have done with respect to um, the other uh, parameters which we say the sensitivity, specificity and then accuracy level of the color difference, color difference ratio, then band ratio and chromatic aberrations. Comparison of algorithms in terms of these parameters. We talked of other parameters there, you talked of these parameters here. You see here that in each of these situations then chromatic aberration, now you see here that this in fact, uh, we have this accuracy is also 99.52 as compared to the accuracy in the other ones. And then uh, the other details which are all given, it is very much uh, in, you can say that uh, very much in, uh, inclined towards uh, chromatic aberration is the method which uh, gives us the better result. Time taken. Now, let us see what is the in respect of time taken? That means, which method is uh, is taking uh, less time, more time or what is that? Because we have to also compare when we say that accuracy, we have to also talk of uh, what is the time taken for that method. It, you may have accuracy of very high, but the time taken is more, then there will be problem. But we can see in this aspect that for this particular method, you can see the time taken minimum time and the average time is this, which is much more than the other uh, times which are taken by the other methods, color difference method, color difference ratio and uh, even the band ratio. So, with this uh, we still feel that chromatic aberration method which has been adopted to identify appears to be the one which will give us um, higher level of accuracy and lesser time for allocating the cotton balls in, the, uh, um, uh, in that uh, plant. Coordinates of targeted objects. Well, um, 
this is uh, in fact uh, uh, we have talked of this because when you are talking of um, the target object, our target object is the cotton balls and uh, how do we um, locate the um, uh, target object? We need to know about its x, y, z and also we know um, about the uh, orientation of that. So, this, this talks of that where we have talked of the x, y, z values. We need to know the x, y, z values when we are talking of the uh, coordinates of the target. Well, algorithms for finding real world coordinates using, uh, using scene construction method. Now, there is one you need to con construct the scene sometimes in the laboratory when we want to identify a certain situation whether the cotton ball is exact located at that place or not, whether my system or the algorithm which I have written or the um, instrument which I, um, uh, I have made will be in a position to identify properly or not. So, two methods have been employed here. First method uh, is talking of the algorithm for um, finding real world coordinates uh, using scene reconstruction method. The second one is algorithm for finding real world coordinates using triangular method. Now, these two um, uh, flow charts are given here. If you have some knowledge, we will, you will appreciate, otherwise, you will say that we do not understand what is that it is. But then uh, it is starts from the images which we have already discussed that the images taking, then disparity, then construction of the scene, then the images on the left, then centroid, cotton balls, point uh, cloud of the scene, and then xyz values. How do you get to the xyz values? In fact, we get the positive images go to the negative images and then we try to locate that and what should be the location of the arm all details are given and we have tried in two methods here. In both the methods there are some level of success which we got. So, we thought of sharing that also with you although it may not be essential for you to follow both the methods, but then we we find that if uh, both are given to you, you will be able to appreciate why one method is giving advantage over the other one. Now, location result using scene construct method. Now, as you have seen that on the right we have given a pattern and on the basis of the one which we have talked of actual points and the output points, if how do we, how this particular algorithm is in a position to reconstruct what we have and uh, you can see that uh, the values which are here, the values which are say for example, x, mm, x millimeter here and the x millimeter here, you can see this was minus and this is this output points. Similarly, at say uh, a value of minus 280 here and in this slightly off. Okay. Similarly, say this is this much and this value is this. Mm, this value is this here. So, you can see that um, the scene has been recre uh, reconstructed in that method you are trying to only validate, you are trying to see whether the system is working or not. This is all laboratory exercise which you know, has been done to, to reconstruct and then understand the system uh, because once the machine is designed and the, um, the whole robot arm is designed, it, when it goes to the field how it will behave. So, that part is a separate thing which we have not done, but what we have done is we have taken a real image of a um, crop uh, where the um, cotton balls are there and then from there we have tried to understand the whole, um, whole design of it, whole mechanics of this and whole system of this uh, processing of the image and identifying the image. Well, um, uh, matrix represent a position of rigid body. This is this talks of the basics of that. Uh, I need not go into that. But uh, there will be uh, the design of the um, uh, end effector will come into play over here. So, um, uh, what is done is an object can be represented by a. Now, this is the basics. Uh, I will not like to um, give you the basics here. But then, if you um, go into details, you will definitely find here. So, I will skip this but I have given to you so that you can understand the mechanics behind this, the theory behind the whole aspects of identifying a an object. Robot kinematics, what is the kinematics of robot as such? Because you know that uh, this will find out as I have already said that it will find out uh, the uh, x, y, z 
because we we have to have an end effector and this end effector will tell what is the location and when it will be in a position to find out the real location of the um, uh, cotton ball. So, we have a forward kinematics wherein we are in a position to find out the x y z location and then re inverse kinematics where we are in a position to find out the angles theta x theta y and theta z Cartesian spin. Now, now this uh, the details remaining this the kinematics has to be followed. Now, these are the basics of the system before you enter into the uh, details of designing. Uh, it is worth uh, giving as an information to you, but then uh, until unless you have knowledge about the image processing, you have knowledge, some knowledge about what the robot kinematics is and um, what are other details of uh, the matrix etcetera, you may not be in a position to follow. But what is to be understood and appreciated is the attempt the approach which will help you to um, see that there are possibilities of developing such a thing. If you want to develop um, uh, uh, say another um, fruit harvesting or an fruit identification, then definitely you will be in a position to do that using the method. Now, well, uh, some of these uh, details uh, are also further given about the parameters and the mechanics of this, how to get the angles and then how to get the arm of the uh, uh, robot. These are some of the details with the different links and the axes which are to be followed. So, that uh, you can you can see that um, these locate the exact. So, these are the some of the details which have been, been taken from literature for your knowledge which you can go into details and try to follow them. These are the different parameters of the robotic arm what are the parameters of the robotic arm, what are the angle you can see that we what we have shown here is that uh, this is um, how what are the different details how this will move and what are the angles it will move at and uh, what are the positions it will move, what distances it will move before it reaches the particular uh, location uh, the end effector which will reach the arm. So, how the arm will be, you can see the details of the distances which have been made and what are the um, connections which are required to move it uh, in different angles etcetera in both the situations we have uh, indicated over here. Inverse kinematics as I said that uh, we um, I need not explain the details of this inverse kinematics I have already talked of, but the flow chart is given here for you to follow and you can always uh, use this for understanding the system better and identifying the angles as uh, reverse kinematics talks of the angles to be identified with respect to x y z uh, coordinates. Well, G u i has to be written um, j, the this uh, will help you to understand this as um, a program which you have to a uh, graphical user interface. Now, you have to use to design the manipulator. Now, um, here uh, although um, all details are shown to you on the diagram here, I will just pick up and tell you some of the things. For example, um, see here um, this is the x y z uh, um, situation here and if this is the uh, this is the item here this is the this is uh, your arm. Now, these are the arms which are moving here and you will try to locate. So, you can see here the one 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now, this 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5 are here. Now, input positions x, y, z here and the highest, lowest, leftmost, rightmost this is how we try to this is how we try to identify the location. A particular location has to be identified so in this x, y, z plane and this is the arm, this is the robotic arm which is going to identify. So, at least it must get some locations of left uh, uh, the highest, lowest, sideways and then location center, these positions 5 positions and then the output uh, the angular limits you can say accordingly are given here the lower limits and the upper limits of the angles with respect to this. After you have found out this you must also um, uh, require what will be the amount of torque required for doing this task from here to here and to this what is the torque required. So, the maximum torque required is also given in this particular the joint uh, torque how much will be at each joint these joints what will be the torque required. 
and then what are the values of this. So, accordingly the motor has to be selected, the motor has to be designed. Generally, we do not design in the sense what I mean design by this here is, so you select the particular type of motor which will give that, that much of torque, at least that much of torque. So, depending upon the, uh, the requirement, you have to choose the torque which is slightly higher in capacity and it will be able to do the task. Uh, so, the motors which will be required for each of these links here, you can see 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, each mo motor with the different torques uh, which are given over here. Now, in this if you say exit, this will the GUI, it will exit out of GUI. So, this GUI which has been developed, this is for the design of the manipulator. So, what the manipulator and then what is the curvature, you really how the, what will be the workspace of that robotic car. You can see here, we have shown here the workspace of the robotic car, which way it will move. You can see here the, um, uh, the patterns which are shown here. So, it is shown how it will move and the torque is given over here. So, this picking arm design uh, has to be picked up in such a way, uh, has to be designed in such a way or the GUI has to tell us as to what is the uh, torque required what is the um, space required and what are the locations of the, um, uh, the cotton ball which is available. And on that basis, if you can design the end effector, which will do the job. Now, this talks of the torque requirement calculated in um, MATLAB using uh, uh, RTB and the one which is uh, for each of the joints, you can see this is what it is uh, shown. So, for each of the um, joints, joint 1, 2, 3, 4, what are the torque required, joint torque required is given over here. This has been the, um, done uh, using the GUI uh, as I showed earlier graph. This is the flowchart to operate the or complete over robotic arm. I will not go into details of this, but I have talked of this slowly that uh, you need to know the uh, take the image as I if you go back to the previous. Uh, uh, the first slide where I had shown you that what is the cycle. We need to identify it, then we need to segment it, then we need to locate it actually and then find out its x y z position, then we find out its uh, through reverse I mean inverse kinematics, find out the theta angle, theta x, theta y, theta z these angles, so that the end effector can go to that location and pick up the balls. So, the whole uh, flow chart uh, of reputation of the aerotic arm is given in this here uh, you, for you to appreciate and understand if you can. But then what you know from this particular lecture is that an advanced approach has been uh, employed for doing this. I will add in a flow chart to run servo motors, how the servo motors will run. So, this is the flow chart for that. You can see the details on the right hand side which we have given here for all the details of the electronic um, hardware which is uh, employed in this. But the working robotic arm, so this is the one which is developed at IIT Kharagpur and I will just show you the um, uh, small video of uh, this particular thing. You, you can have a look at what are the um, items or the components of this robotic arm. There is a manipulator, uh, with, um, uh, then we have not kept the um, end effector in this now. The stereo vision, we can see the location where the stereo vision is there. Then there is a power source which will be giving the power to the whole uh, system. Then Arduino Mega Unit control unit, the control unit is over here. And there is a laptop for processing the information and uh, interaction between the, uh, the person or the engineer and the uh, system. So, you can see here, I will just show you the, the working of this system. You can just have a look at this, uh, how it moves. Maybe that uh, uh, this is this spare, uh, this is the location where, yeah, you can have a look at this, that how it moves and what are the different uh, ways that it has to reach to the actual point. You can just see that this happens. Yes, so it is going in now. This you can see that it, uh, it reaches the location and then it will be in a position to pick up. So, this is as if it has just picked up. So, this is one which uh, we can show you that it has gen done the job and it will come back to this position. Now, the all these aspects will take place. This is the stage at which we have developed and we are hoping that it will be the machine will be ready in some course of time. You can see the various aspects. 
So, as such um, in this particular lecture, we wanted to share with you the research work done at IIT Kharagpur regarding the advanced technology used for cotton harvesting. You can use this, uh, you can use the technology for many other things. The, the, and there is a need for um, use of artificial intelligence, sensors, uh, embedded systems and various other aspects of all related to internet of things for, for uh, designing the agricultural machines and devices which will uh, require uh, less power which will be able to do the task uh, easily and which will also not get affected by the various factors um, related to the crop or to the soil and things like that. So, um, with this I think uh, some approach has been given. I hope you will definitely have many questions and uh, we would like to answer this uh, at some point of time when uh, we encounter uh, those questions and I hope that uh, you, you will get benefited out of this and we will try to um, answer questions at a later point of time. Thank you very much.